A few days ago on my drive home, I was reflecting on the first few weeks of the school year with my eighth grade band, and then I ended up sharing one of those reflections with them the next day. And I said, going into this year, I felt like there was a lot of talent in this group, but we needed to learn how to rehearse. And what I said to them was, they've been crushing it all year long with rehearsals and just their approach. And we're seeing really good results because of that. And really throughout our middle school band program, we're seeing kids quickly get into the flow of consistent, high quality rehearsals. I think there are at least four things that we've implemented over the last few years that we can point to as reasons why we're seeing some of these results. And I want to take a few minutes to share some of those in this video. So first of all, while we've been using an automated warm-up system for as long as I've been there, we started working with a fully fleshed out and progressive series of 12 warm-ups that are now the amplified warm-ups and started using those uh, from one like concert cycle to the next. And so students are always moving up a level in their skill development. We're starting to see an increase, just that kind of compounding skill development as we go through, our students go through the program. And it's also something that makes our jobs a lot easier because it does automate the first part of rehearsal. We just press play and then the first five or six minutes of rehearsal are covered. But we're also seeing some really, really good skill development. This year, our seventh graders started a brand new warm up. And within like the first couple of minutes, I could tell that they were playing really well and it just sounded good, even just from the first few minutes of having instruments out at the beginning of the year. So it's something that, that we're really excited about just to see how our students are developing. If you want to see how amplified warmups can work in your system, check that out at amplifywarmups.com. There's a sample warmup that you can also try to see if it works in your space. So check that out. The second thing is something that we implemented uh, the next year, and that is, uh, you know, I started to reflect, like, this year's going really well. Last year, I had kind of a special group, and then the year before, it took them until about February or March to get to the point where they were rehearsing really well, but that was also the time when I introduced a rehearsal phases part of it, just how our concert prep goes together, and so I divided the concert prep cycle, however many weeks we had leading up to the performance, into three parts, and so the first part is what I I call the recognition phase. And so during this portion, students are in charge of learning everything that they need to know in order to perform the music. So they won't have developed all the skill, but they're learning all the concepts. So they're learning what are the key signature notes that they need to watch out for. What are the fingerings? What are the percussion stickings, trill fingerings? What are the goal tempos? Um, how are we going to count the rhythms that we have in front of us? And so they're making a lot of marks in their music and they're just learning everything that they need to know. And during this time, we're working really slowly. If it's, there's any kind of speed at all to the piece, we're working way under goal tempo and just really putting a focus on accuracy. Once that's done, we shift into the repetition phase where it's just all about working the music and getting in a lot of repetitions on the music. And we start to bump up the tempo a little bit with still high focus on accuracy. And then we shift gears a few weeks before the performance into the refinement phase where we're starting to lock in goal tempos and tempo changes. And we're making sure that what we want to execute musically is happening as well. And so what this does is it gives a unique purpose to every rehearsal throughout the concert cycle. There's no just kind of floating through the first part of a concert prep cycle. And then all of a sudden we start to feel the pressure of that upcoming performance. And then we try to shift it into gear. This gives a, a focus to rehearsal from the beginning of the concert cycle. And we've seen really a great increase in focus with our students through that process. So that's uh, that's been a big thing. Something that happened last year that's been a real game changer. And, and I mentioned that last year's group was a really special group. Um, but even then, we had a few struggles in the beginning of the year, and I realized it was kind of the tone that I was setting at the beginning of some rehearsals. And maybe it was something they did as they were entering the room or something, but maybe it was something completely unrelated to the, what they did. Or maybe I was just in a bad mood. And I, I realized that I had to be responsible for not carrying that negative energy into the rest of rehearsal and setting the tone that way. And so what I did was uh, set it up so that we start with the warm-up, and then the next thing is announcements. But that first announcement is a moment of gratitude where I'm responsible for communicating something that I'm thankful for. And so sometimes it's something that's more personal, and so they're reminded that I'm a human being. Um, but a lot of times I try to make it focused on something that they're doing well, uh, whether it's we had a great start of the jazz season or percussion. I, I'm thankful for how you've been getting in the flow of all these new rehearsal procedures that we're trying, or the whole band, you've just been crushing it in rehearsals all year. So just um, communicating that praise and just starting out building that positive culture. And this has been something that's built a lot of rapport and trust between me and the band, I feel like, this last couple years. And so that's been a big improvement that's led to consistently high-quality rehearsals. 
And then finally, something that's new this year is really forming my rehearsals around a consistent fundamentals framework. I use the word pop for all of our non-musical fundamentals and the word tarts for our musical fundamentals. And that one I got from Robert Herrings. I'll explain a little bit about that later. But for pop, it's like our procedures, our instrument operation. And so we talk a little bit about that. If, if there's anything to emphasize in the rehearsal, we'll do that during the announcements time. But then we start to work through our musical fundamentals a little bit. So after we do our announcements, we shift into something that's going to help us to do some just really kind of detailed focus work on uh, tone and intonation. Sometimes that's just in the form of some simple key tuning exercises. Um, but we've also been using a new book called Tuned In uh, from Bi Brian Balmages and Robert Herrings. And we're still getting used to that, but we're playing through that and it's getting students to listen in, in some new ways. So that's been really helpful. And then we shift into uh, an articulation exercise. And this was something that I got from, again, from Robert Herrings, but it was in a book that was published by uh, Chris Griffa and Chip DiStefano. It's called Foundations. And there's an articulation exercise in there that we've just been working through at 90 beats per minute, just really talking about different styles of articulation, but make sure we're getting consistent work there. And then we try to do something that's focused on rhythm as well. And we've been working through some of the rhythm charts from Teaching Rhythm Logically by Darcy Vogt Williams. I also try to mix in a little bit of sight reading factory just for some variety. And so we're applying some of those rhythms in a little bit more realistic musical context. But we start to work through those things. Um, and then like students just like know what we're doing, or they know what we're trying to achieve with fundamentals work. And especially as we've been in this uh, recognition phase, we've been spending a little bit more time on fundamentals work as now that we're shifting with more into a, a repetition phase, as we get a little bit closer to our concert, we'll probably um, back off a little bit of our, on our fundamentals and start to work a little bit more on our concert music. But having all those things in structure, it helps the students to know why we're doing it and just sets us up for good rehearsals. There's one more thing I want to talk about, and that's how having all these aspects of rehearsal kind of pushes you toward a faster pace. And this is something that in and of itself can help improve your rehearsals because it, it helps the students to stay engaged when we're moving fast, when we're changing things frequently. Um, they know they need to be on their toes and ready to go. Um, they're not getting bored. Um, they're engaged. Things are always moving. And it's just a more dynamic approach to rehearsals. It's really helping to be high quality and, and consistent every time. I hope something in here was helpful to you. Um, let me know what, what's working for you and your rehearsals this year. Uh, and again, check out the warm-up system at amplifiedwarmups.com. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.